satisfied, uh, perhaps with himself there in that game. We are going into Frozen Temple. Dark absolutely destroyed Ty on this map. It went to like a long game, and he just totally outplayed him. Uh, it was a big macro game, went to like 20 minutes, and he made it look easy, man. So I'm fearing for Beyond coming into this one. We'll see if he's got something prepared for game number two on Frozen Temple. Welcome to one of our frostier maps here. Down in the bottom right, in the red, the Zerg player, it is Dark from SK Telecom T1. And his opponent to the top left, down a game in this series, looking to come back. It is Bjorn. Whenever I hear someone say Bjorn, I just remember the intro uh, to the GSL. You know how they, they do, they say the player names. That's and the right. voice actor was always just like, yeah. You <laughs> know, it sounds so sensual when he said his name. I'll just never get that out of my head. The uh, official, um, like when he was on Xenex, the player ID calls for either season one or season two of the open season of the TG Sambo uh, in 2011. His name was, uh, Sensor, mm -hmm. uh, whether intentionally or as a, as a joke, intentionally, I'm not entirely sure what the what it did. But called him to be did censor his ID, um, and I guess he Google translated or looked up what Beyond translates to, if, if you mean it that way. And uh, for a while, on the latter, actually for a long time, and uh, he may even still use this ID to this day. He was the ID next excrement, um, yeah. And that was it was pretty funny that, that it turned out that way. Obviously now um, it's no longer censored and no one really cares, but. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, is, it is his last name, right? It's, yeah, that's right. It's not a super popular one, but it, you know, a lot of people have Yana as their last name. It is definitely uh, not one of the, it's not like top 10. No. But it's, it's probably like top 25. Um, we have, if you guys are just curious, uh, you know, there's less Korean surnames than there are, you know, Western surnames, just how it is, because uh, of long-standing families and dynasties and things like that. But. Let's get back here into this this game as this Reaper comes in. We'll drop that grenade down to push the Queen off of Creep, but in fact may come back to bite him. Four health left, the Reaper will escape. That's always scary, but uh, I do trust in the high-level Terrans to do well. We do have a pretty quick Roach Warren here from Dark. He has shown Roach pressure on this map before against Terran. We'll see if he does it now. Could just be like the safest Roach Horn of all time, just in case Beyond is going crazy Reaper style. But uh, I think he I, wants I, to I be don't aggressive. Think so. yeah. yeah, he is making like this extra Overlord here. He might not make a single more drone. I don't think he will actually. He's gonna do 21 drone, Roach uh, timing attack. Now, when you see this wall in, in these positions, the first thing that any Terran thinks about, especially he's been playing for a long time, is oh, unlucky spawns. The add on. For Stim, and also making Marauders, is on the outside of the wall. So when the Roach is hit, which he does scout here with this Reaper, which is super important, when the Roach is hit, he's going to have to really be relying on, on different add-ons. Now he's getting a Siege Tank already, which is obviously huge, and he's going to get some Liberators out. Liberators going to have to be just in the right spot so it can't be hit by Corrosive Bile. This is going to be a tough hold, and actually, no, he, he made a Reactor at this one, so let, that's... Okay, so he only has one barracks, okay. So this is the reactor. The tech lab I was mentioning earlier was for the siege tank. Okay, so less crazy bad if he loses it. Um, but he's not going to have marauders. And when he loses it, he will uh, lose marine production. That's that's a big thing. Um, man, Dark is so aggressive. He's even going lair behind this. I wonder what his follow-up is. I wonder what the follow-up is. Maybe Spire? Or he goes Roach Speed. He's like super aggressive. Let's find out. First of all, we're going to see this. Reactor targeted. Immediately, a very expensive add-on that takes a long time to build, takes longer than the barracks to build. Okay, he has to be really good with his micro on the siege tank. Obviously, he needs to keep it on the high ground and the links will start to chip it away. Killing the reactor is a start, but it's not enough. Yeah, and you know, two tanks out now with the third on the way. It didn't really do much damage. I'm very curious to see what the follow-up is here. He has a lot of gas mined. He has enough to make some tech here. It is a spire. 
You know, I thought it would be. Now he's probably just going to hope that he has enough mutas to overwhelm the first group of marines and that there aren't any turrets. The key here is that this gets, uh, this is hidden and is not scouted. That is absolutely critical. Sees the lair. That's already somewhat of a tell. And, I mean, it's not going to be a two-base hydro push, right? So, I mean, we're... <laughs> At this point, I, I'd say turrets will go up very soon. Hey, he did just make two eBays to go into very fast uh, upgrades, of course, because he knows he's held this off and he wants to get as far ahead of Dark in that as possible. But, uh, you know, because the eBays are made, he does have the available tech to make missile turrets. The Liberators obviously are going to do quite well against Wait. the Mutas as well. He canceled the Spire oh, and he made an infestation pit. <laughs> Only logical next step is swarm posts. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm just gonna let that one sit for a bit. We'll see. <laughs> uh, he did make one swarm post last game. I think it was an accident, but uh, he's keeping Bion on his toes, right? This is a very similar type of situation. Uh, mind game wise, is what we saw Solar do when he safely took a third. Then he was like, well, actually, I'm just gonna attack. He's trying to make, in the opposite way, he's trying to make Bjorn think that he's going to attack with Mutas, while now he's expanding and trying to get oh. a quick hive tag. The scan sees it, sees the infestation pit, and he didn't see the spire before, but he saw the lair. So maybe Dark was thinking in his head, like, okay, the most common follow would be a spire, but I'm just going to go for infestation pit instead. But the fact that it gets scouted now by the scan is really bad. So he's not going to try to rush out high for like adrenal glands or anything like that. This is going to be for sneaky infestors. Um, this starts to feel like our Archon match we saw earlier with the uh, very quick infestors and the fungal growths we saw with that. Uh, I talked about how it's very powerful if you have Burrow to sneak those around and get a, a hidden fungal off. Very difficult to execute, but if you do it correctly, you can do so much. You can win a game off of that. You can destroy an entire army. It's like better than Psy Storm, basically. You know, it's it, you catch that, you destroy everything. It can't move. In this case, he doesn't go Burrow. I think he's getting Infestors to defend anything that comes his way while he gets the Hive. So he's using this tech as a defensive measure, as you were talking about. You know, uh, this is something that Leenok was quite famous for, actually, in the past, is going three base Hive with Infestors to defend. Dark as well. You know, he, he did it on a bunch of maps. I don't recall him doing it on this one, especially with that third base kind of just out there. Uh, generally, you would want to try to do this on something like Dust Towers, where you can defend your third base quite well. And we already have this push coming across the map. Just have the stim, no combat shields just yet. Of course, those infantry upgrades were very delayed because of the uh, you know, the barracks of the reactor, and he had to respond by making a bunch of tanks, so he couldn't switch to the tech lab. And drones here already under fire, but a quick response. No fungal toss at this time. Yeah, he's being very, uh, you know, not greedy, but just you Conservative, know, patient, yeah. patient with this. Okay, let's see how much damage he can get done with this. I mean, these tanks could just get trapped if he fungles the medevacs. They won't be able to retreat. They're fungled here. Well, there Medevac you go. is trapped as well. And Can't this will shut down up hard. They're fungled. And oh, he catches these two. Can he kill them? Gets one. The Marine gets out. Luckiest Marine ever. <laughs> And a very good shutdown here. Now he's got this incredible tech. The Ultralist Cavern coming down at 8.30. That was a, just a really smart hold, too. You know, we were talking about saving the fungals for the medevacs and the tanks. And it's because he saw the bio and he's like, oh, no, I can hold that with everything else. I don't need to fungle that. You yeah. know, maybe a lesser player would be like, oh, I just uh, I got to just fungal. This is what I have. You know, this is what I do with my investors. But it was really just a smart hold there. It was the most punishing way to hold it is to ensure no retreat. And if you miss your fungals, though, I mean, this is a totally different situation, but he used it so well, as you said. Now he has this amazing tech, and that was the problem for Bjorn. In the previous set, he couldn't deal with the Ultras. The Ultras ripped him apart. Obviously, we don't have a queen count yet. And oh, boy, this is never where your wings want to be. That was a good trade for Bjorn. Oh, oh that, what? I thought he dodged a second one, too. I was about to, like, jump out of my seat. <laughs> Oh, the bailing run! Oh, by. he wasn't looking because he was looking at his drop. And ten SCVs and several mules go down. A lot of bio goes down here too. The widow mines do get some really nice hits, but definitely not the fight he was looking for, especially with no plus two. Kind of like the anti timing there. Okay, Bion knows he has a small window of time to really hit hard before the ultras are out, and that's what he's trying to do here. He's going to use this ramp as a fallback point, but if you get fungled, you can't. So he only has one fungal right now. Okay, there it goes. I think you're right. Let's see if he's got another one. At least he does not yet. He's not using it. 
Wings go down here, and Ravagers are horrible versus Bio. Now Pion has his opportunity. He has a huge army supply right now. Can he hit before those Ultras pop out? That's what he's looking for. Adrenal Glance not done for 10 seconds. There's only one Ultra on the way as well, because so many units made in the defense. GG. Pion ties it up. Beautiful hold on the Roach attack. That was what won him the game. The follow-up from Dark was intelligent. Well executed, but still, he was so behind, he could not keep up with the army that Bion had, the army's size. And uh, Fungals can buy you a lot of time, but it wasn't enough there at the end of the day, so... Very impressive by Bion, it makes us a series. We're tied up now 1-1. And, I mean, this is how the other series kind of started. SOS takes the first win. Yeah. Then, you know, Solar crushes him in the next three games. We could have something similar happen here. I don't think so, though, because Dark is playing really well. Even though he all in and it failed, his turnaround time on that, like his transition time, he was like already transitioning. Like, yeah, it, it felt really like he good. transitioned before he even knew it wasn't going to work. Like, I'm like, whoa, how did you transition that fast? Like, that's how you do it. If, you, if your all in isn't going to work, you got to go like light speed. He made a quick decision, he made a tough decision to cancel the Spire. And who yeah, knows how that would have worked if he went for it, but that confidence. It's uh, it's pro gamer level. It's champion yeah, I mean, level. It's dark level, as you said, champion level. And imagine if he had gone for the infestation pit right away. If he had like made that decision right then, he's like, no, spires are not going to work. I already know that I have to go infestation pit. He, he has more gotten, energy. Yeah, more energies, more fungals, just a faster hive. You know, maybe he could have gotten ultras out just that much quicker. If he had, let's say, even just two Ultras for when that last push hit, he would have held. Yeah, the Fungal goes down, the Ultras clean everything up. This time the Fungal went down, but there were enough medevacs to outheal the Fungal damage. Then he had Ravagers, not, not which are... stuff, yeah. Ravagers basically do terrible damage, uh, and I'm not talking Dust and Brad are terrible, terrible damage. Their damage output versus Bio is laughable. Um, pretty sure, like, a Ravager versus one Marine, like, that has, like, upgrades with a... <laughs> With a one medevac, like the Ravager loses, like with the medevac, I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, with Sim, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious, obviously, and Corrosive Bile obviously would kill it, but um, I'm just saying, like, this what is. What if it has Stim and Combat Shields and you might go around it? There you go. I, I'm not even 100% <laughs> sure the Ravager has decent attack speed, but I think the Marine wins that. If not, it's it's too, cl it's like so close, we, it's kind of silly, but the Ravager is not designed to do damage with its attacks. It's designed to do damage with its spell, uh, Corrosive Bile. And he had like a few Ravagers and a few uh, Queens there, but that's it. There's no big Baneling count. There's no yeah. Ultras, Infestors, out of energy. And then suddenly... That one Fungal is just like, ah, uh, you know, nothing to follow it up. Some Marines die, but the Marauders live and they do the damage. So 1-1 one, one it is, and Bion is bringing it back. I know a lot of people get scared after that first game, but now it's tied up. Dark fans get a little bit scared again. It's, it's a very close series already, you know, just in the games. I, I feel like if Dark plays it straight up in that game, which I, I really would have liked to see that because, as I said, he destroyed TY on that map. He made it look quite easy, and it was a big macro game. I feel like he should have just been confident and just gone for that. Maybe he saw blood in the water, you know, with that wall, as we were saying, and he wants to go snipe the add-on, get a, a, an advantage through that, and it's not like a real all-in. I mean, it, it's like a semi-all-in yeah. where you can kind of transition, but you do a lot of damage at the same time. But I don't know. I, I would have liked to see just more straight-up play on that map. Well, we're going into Dust Towers now. This is the map where you see a lot of straight-up play, unless SOS is playing. So we'll see. Uh, <laughs> or Zest going for Proxy Oracle every <laughs> oh game. Oh, my God, Zest, yeah.